Hello, I'm Lauren and I'm just going to give you a little talk through about my BTEC Creative Media Unit 3 project called Research Techniques in the Creative Media Industries. For this project, I'm going to focus on the BBC Free television programme People Just Do Nothing. So first of all, I'm just going to give you a little guide through about some research techniques used. So we've got quantitative research here and quantitative research is research which is collected and data is absolute. By this, I mean that the data is in figures. This is good because it allows you to compare data figures in graphs and statistics. Examples which can be related to people just do nothing can include program ratings. Program ratings are very useful as they evaluate the content and report the sustainability of TV programs. These are used by producers. They can help to see whether the TV program or film or any media which is displayed on TV or radio should be carried on and whether the content is sustainable. Barb and Rajar these stand for different things to do with data gathering agencies. They commission research companies to provide audience viewing figures and other services. These are used, again, by production companies to see the sustainability of their television programmes. They can also be used by advertising agencies to see what television channels and what times they should advertise on to focus on their target audience. As a TV show, People Just Do Nothing is aired on BBC Free. It is important to analyse the BBC Free website hits. BBC Free is a bit different as recently it's turned to an online only service. This means that anyone who wants to view People Just Do Nothing will have to go through the BBC website. Analysing the BBC website hits will allow the producers to see how many views the People Just Do Nothing show is getting, their viewing habits, whether they're watching the series on repeat, whether they're viewing other things as well, um, or whether they are just like a one-off visitor and they don't have an account. And it will also um, allow the monitoring of the website hits and the advertisements which are going on as well at the same time. So the other thing is qualitative research. Now this is actually usually taken out um, after the quantitative research because qualitative research actually has to be created. This means it's more suitable for what you're actually doing because you have created this research and it's purely for you whereas quantitative research is collected by somebody else, so it's a lot more broad to what you're doing. Uh, so its definition is the gathering of information in a non-numerical form. What this basically means is you're asking people for their opinions, which is good because it gives you a more in-depth and detailed opinion and idea of what they think. This can be collected in reviews. So this uh, shows people's views on the show um, and their opinions. The website, so currently the show is features on many websites like in articles um, and reviews and the show also has a Facebook page which is quite interesting because it means that people can actually comment on the content they're producing um, more easily without setting up an extra account. They're on their Facebook, they can just give the page a like. And this is really good for advertising as it gives a company a free advertising platform and it targets directly their fans. Um, advertising campaigns for the show. So due to the show being online only because it's BBC free, there's gonna be needed quite a lot of advertisement offline to get people to see the show. Uh, so there was actually um, a project set up with the BBC to, you've probably seen this on the TV a few months ago, where when BBC were moving, when BBC Three were moving online, on every single BBC channel, there was advertisements about this move, just to let everyone know, um, and this actually really helped. 
Radio campaigns can also help advertise the show. Um, it's quite unique for the BBC as because they have so many different radio stations. It's quite cheap for them to do this and it can reach so many people because the amount of people who listen to BBC Radio 1, BBC Radio 1 Extra and the rest of them is astonishing. Focus groups. Uh, focus groups are actually really important. They're done directly by the people who want them done. So they can select people of different demographics, different places everywhere. Um, you've got a really broad section of people and basically they will watch the show and they will give opinions on their shows. Um, they will relate it to different shows and basically just review the show in all. Um, and this data can be used then in correlation with other data to, to determine any future release of content by the company. Um, next, I'm going to talk about audience research. Um, quite self-explanatory, audience research is researching into the audience. Um, audience data. So this is data which includes viewing numbers, audience demographics, and where they are viewing the show from and how. So what I mean by that is, are they viewing it on their tablet? Are they using their TV? Are they using a phone? Are they using a laptop or a computer? And this can actually really help to see where you should advertise. Because if you've got people watching from their TV at home, um, if they set up like iPlayer or something, then they're not gonna get a lot of advertisements through. But if they're on their phone, then you can actually set up like emails to alert them of different shows um, which are similar to this and which relate to this. Audience profiling. So because it is an online show, it allows you to be, um, you can learn a lot more about your audience from it being online. Because if they're using the BBC Free website, you can actually track what other shows the audience is watching, um, well, the person is watching on BBC. So you might find that they, that quite a lot of people watch People Just Do Nothing with another show, um, which could suggest maybe the show should do a collaboration or actually take some of the good things um, from each show and focus it more on that because that's what the audience likes and it just gets to build like a personality of your audience making it more easier to actually come up with new ideas. Um, the demographics, this involves the age and gender of the audience. So for example, um, this show heavily relies on grime music as a theme and topic throughout the series. Um, and normally grime music is listened to by the age range of 15 to 30, um, predominantly male um, as an audience. Obviously the audience is a lot wider than that as well, but mainly this is the sort of people who it attracts. Um, this can actually help determine the advertising strategies used to focus this um, and it can really help. Um, next you have consumer behaviour. Um, so you'll notice like on the BBC or any other viewing platforms like Netflix, you can actually easily rate the show and give it um, out of five stars or, or four stars, however, however it works on that website or viewing platform. Um, and this allows you to make direct connections with the audience um, to analyse its feelings towards the show. Audience awareness. So this is actually something which a company develops over time. Um, and the more aware a company is of their audience, the more they actually know their audience. Therefore, they can edit their products and make the products more suitable for the customer. Um, in TV, this can work in many ways, but one of the main ways which is important is the viewing time. So um, if, if it's actually a show which is aired on TV, um, are your audience more likely to watch it if it's on five o'clock, three o'clock in the day, or 10 o'clock at night? For example, Antiques Roadshow probably wouldn't get a lot of viewers at 11 o'clock at night. Whereas if you put people just do nothing at two o'clock in the afternoon, the viewing, um, the audience would probably all be at work or doing something else. So you've got to really think about when your audience is going to watch the show. This has become less important um, in this day and age because um, the increase of demand t TV. So quite a lot of people don't even watch TV at the time it was aired. Um, for example, quite a lot of people watch television and media 
through Netflix and that's just um it just happens at any time of the day um so the viewing patterns are quite disturbed of people so why you you should conduct audience research um it's very very important first of all it helps determine the size of the audience so there's no point in you making um there's no point in you investing loads and loads of money if your audience is very, very small because you're not going to make the profit back if you're selling um, a product or, um, or if you're going on ratings. It also helps to determine what channel it should be put on. For example, um, for example, EastEnders is put on BBC One at quite a prime time and that's because loads of people watch it or if something quite niche like this is put on BBC Three because not as many people would watch it but as it grows in popularity it'll eventually get to maybe the BBC One stage. It also helps uh, the company to learn about the audience demographic um, so for example age is very very important should it be actually brought up um, in the rating like should it be a PG should it be a U should it be an 18 should it be a 15 and what sort of content they should include in that um, whether it should be swearing or not and that's very important it also helps the company to discover audience preferences for example the audience might like more music included the audience might not like as much music included they might want more comedy they might want more real life so that's extremely important within the production and creation stage. It gives you an insight into your target audience um, and where to advertise as well because if you're finding that most of your audience actually have social media and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook it's quite important to advertise on these social media platforms but if you find that most of your audience don't then what's the point in doing this? Next I'm going to talk about product research. So product research comes in a number of forms. First of all you've got product marketing. So this is a study which is used to conclude where the product should be sold, what the product should be, its cost and also its place of advertisement. Um, so yeah that, that is very very important because if you're selling it in the wrong place that your audience isn't going to go to then you're not going to make any money from selling that product. Also, if it's out of the price range of your audience, then they're not going to pay that, so the product will not be successful. Um, and it really needs to be targeted to your target audience, because especially if the product or creation content is niche, you're not going to attract many other people. Um, so it's very, very important. Uh, competition is another thing that's established in product research. So with TV, this includes channels such as ITV and Channel 4, Channel 4 sorry, and these rival to the BBC. Um, the BBC would have to consider funding heavily for a film adaptation or album release of the successful show. So for example, in this case, people just do nothing. Um, and they've got to consider, would people just do nothing compete with other channels? Um, the BBC actually did this with their release, well, their film release of the former TV series Bad Education and that actually was a quite a big hit in the cinemas last year um, and yeah it was a really good movie and it featured Jack Whitehall and he's actually quite a successful standalone comedian too um, so yeah that was quite a success but was it as big as the Inbetweeners for Channel 4? Probably not, no um, and actually the Inbetweeners movie was released a second time for the Inbetweeners 2 um, and for this they needed quite a lot of um, funding because they actually went to different parts of the world um, and you'll find this quite a lot when a TV series turns into a film they tend to make it a bit bigger and a bit better and go further out into the world um, for example in between us 2 they went to Australia obviously the cost of that must have been pretty heavy because you've got to get all of your production team, all of your actors and all of your cast to Australia. You've got to try and find the right places there as well, so you can't really do that in the UK. You have to make trips over there before filming even begins. So quite a lot of funding is needed for that. So you've got to be careful that your 
production is actually going to make a substantial profit. Competitor analysis, so this sort of comes with the competition part, um, you'll find that many different companies will analyse their competitors uh, really, really, really um, like a lot for this because uh, they can learn from their mistakes, they can make their product better, they can just maybe follow the successful bits as well and then get an idea of budgeting because someone's already done something similar to what you're going to do which is actually really good. So advertising effects as it says in the name it's effects of the advertising um, and it's effects that advertising has on the buyer uh, so it's buyer habits and audience choices so if you're making your advert more suited to the target audience it's going to have a better effect. So why should you conduct market research? Uh, it's very, very important as it equips a business with data to make informed decisions um, for the business to help innovation and growth. So it does this by using the four Ps. Um, the four Ps are product, price, placement, and promotion. So the product is actually what you're selling. Is it right for your market, basically? The price, again, is it in the target audience budget? Will they be able to afford it? Will they want to afford it? And is your product actually worth the price you're selling it for? And will the price you're selling it for make a product where, like if you're selling something and it's cost you 15 pounds to make and you're selling it for 16 pound, that's only a one pound profit. Will that afford for all of your workers? Will it afford for the transport cost? Will it make you a profit that is substantial? The placement. So where are you actually gonna sell it? Are you gonna sell it online? Are you gonna sell it in stores? what's gonna happen? And if you do sell it online, will people actually look for it online? Will it? Will people buy it offline? Will your audience actually want to buy things offline? Or if you sell it in store, will the people you want to sell it to go to that store? Will they pay for it? Will they see it? And will they want to buy it? Again, promotion, this is where you actually advertise your product. So if you're advertising to a completely different audience to your target audience in the wrong place, then you're not going to get many sales because your actual target audience isn't seeing it and the audience you are advertising to they're not bothered about your product and they probably won't buy it so it's just a waste of promotion if you conduct your market research regularly then the business can keep up with the dynamics of the economy because it's nature for the economy to change highly which it's going to do anyway so you better keep up to date with it Another type of research, you've got production research. So this involves quite a few things, as you can probably see from the slide. Uh, I'm just going to give a little brief description of content, which is involved with product research, production research. Sorry. So the content. So the film release of People Just Do Nothing would need a very similar story. Well, not too similar, but a similar lineup to the series before, but instead maybe focus on a bigger event. Some ideas I came up with myself was maybe a world tour for Corrupt FM, as that would be quite interesting for the audience as well to see um, them travel around the world rather than just stay in the UK. Um, or maybe going back in time to focus on how the team met up and how their childhoods were like, maybe that would be something that um, the audience would be interested in. But then again, these two options, you'd have to see through market research, through audience research, um, whether the audience would prefer, um, whether they prefer the music side of People Just Do Nothing, if so you'd focus on the world tour for Corrupt FM, or if they preferred actually like the livelihoods of the people in Corrupt FM, and then in that case you'd probably go for the, the focusing on how the team met up and their childhoods one. The viability, so this, um, the release of the film and an album is quite viable as um, the show already has a big fan base and it's on the BBC um, and loads of people like the BBC. Uh, this makes it likely to be profitable um, and it makes it more likely for the BBC to invest more money into the production. So the costs can vary highly for this. So depending on the actual the size of the production team needed, in each location and the production will cost, um, the cost will vary. Um, and a little idea I had, if they went for the world tour for Corrupt FM option, then you could actually do concerts whilst touring for the film. 
so the film could actually feature real life concerts and assuming that the corrupt fm actually has a big fan base anyway and a big in clubs um around the world then you could actually get the corrupt fm to feature clubs do concerts raise money from tickets and this money could go towards the production of the film and paying different people finance the money will come from the bbc placement media so the film could be advertised on social media radio bbc websites and film pages and shows um, and also for guest appearances of the cast could be made on tv shows and radio shows for example bbc one extra i know they've already done a few appearances on this and it's been a success so why not do it again but for the film digital resources so Due to the filming being done in a similar way to the TV programme, because that's been a success already, um, similar, if not the same, resources could be used to film the film. So this would ma maintain the original feel to the actual, um, the actual original series production, but it would also keep the cost lower as you don't have to buy production again. Sorry, I didn't mean to forward onto that slide then. Um, personnel, so obviously the whole Corrupt FM cast would need to be in the feature film because that's what people want to see, they want to see the cast. But also a guest star could be involved too. So I know that Corrupt FM and People Just Do Nothing already have links to Craig David. Or maybe I was thinking a bigger grime artist like Stormzy, he's quite big at the minute and he has a massive fan base. So if he was in a film, not only would you get the Corrupt FM fans, but you'd also get the Stormzy fans. So again, depending on the option chosen, the location will differ. But if you're going on the tour option, then you'll need to get quite a few tour locations lined up. For example, Ibiza, Amsterdam, New York, Paris and London. Um, and you'll need to travel to these, which will create quite a lot of expenses. But if you focus the tour, maybe instead of a world tour, just a European tour, then you could actually use a coach, which is quite cheaper because then you don't have to pay for the planes to, to take the equipment and also all the cast. So maybe a European tour would be more viable. Um, copyright. So obviously you're going to need to pay for copyright. If you're using other people's music in the film, you're going to need a license for that. And also, if the script has been written by somebody else, then you're going to need to pay them the copyrights to use that script. Um, so you pay the writers and the producers. Moving on to primary research. So this is research that you've collected yourself. So it can be called new research. Um, ways of this are interviews. So this is when you just basically, you're getting somebody, you're asking them the question, and it can be an open question. Um, and open questions basically mean, um, so instead of a yes or no, they can answer whatever they want. So it's like a sentence. And it's great because it gives you a more detailed um, idea of their opinion. But then it's quite it's harder to compare their opinion to others. Whereas the closed question it would be yes or no, or giving them an option, like a limited option of choices. So you just tick the box sort of thing. And that's quite good because it allows you to compare, but then again, it has its limits, it can't tell you everything. Uh, you can use surveys as well as a form of primary research. Um, and that basically you use the same set of questions on a variety of people to understand a wider opinion. Focus groups, I mentioned these earlier, you get a bunch of people together and they judge um, and rate the showing of their opinions. This is great because you can probably actually be there once they've watched the show. Um, and the focus group can be of a certain um, set of people. So you could actually get a focus group of 17 year olds um, and that's a focused audience maybe and they can judge their opinion. Um, you can also set up internet forums. This is quite a good thing because yeah, having people, you can get anybody to go on there and they can, you can open the forum and it allows discussion about the, top, um, about the topic, which is the show in this case. And I actually think these are really, really good because people can bounce off other people's ideas and you can sort of see conversations occur about the show. Questionnaires 
are another important thing. Um, and it's kind of similar to a survey, but you ask people to fill in the questionnaire, they voice their opinion, and then you can form um, a stat data of that result. Um, next, I'm going to talk about secondary research, and this is existing research which has already been collected. You'll find that most of the time that this data is less specified and, and less, well, more broad to the topic you want to focus on. So although it's, it's useful, it's not exactly useful to your invest... It's, although it's useful, it's not... Um, it wasn't formed purely for your investigation. It was a formed for a wider... Um, reason but you can still use it it's still relevant so you've got magazines any articles or featured uh, published resources regarding the show or corrupt affair or maybe just the topic of grime music um same again with newspapers uh, ratings show rating is judged by the audience of the show and scales from data gathering agencies books so any stats facts or data included in a book and also journals so some papers <laughs> Papers. Some papers may have been written about the show or the genre. Next we have data gathering agencies. So these are really, really important. Um, so they gather information through commissioning research companies. Um, quite a few popular ones for TV and radio would be BARB and RAJAR. So Barb and Rajar basically. So BARB provides the TV industry with audience measurement. So their aim was to create a standard audience measurement. And it's used by broadcasters and the advertising industry. Um, it's co-owned by the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5, Sky and IPA. Uh, you've got Rajar as well. Rajar works with the UK radio industry. So instead of TV, it's radio this time, to form an audience measurement system. So same again, really, but for radio. It's jointly owned by the BBC and IPA. YouGov, so YouGov works internationally with internet-based films and TV, um, and they conduct research via polls and surveys. And Mosaic, so this is Experium's system for classifying UK households. It's used to analyse customer household habits, and it helps to specialise advertising through direct mail, emailing, texting, online, and TV. Um, so that's it really, um, thank you so much for watching, um, yeah.